Hi and welcome to another video in the RHCSA video series. Today's video is on configure key based authentication for SSH. So SSH is just a management um, remote management platform so uh, secure shell so it allows you to get to the command prompt or the shell of Linux. Um, so um, to enable that um, there's a few things we need to do so obviously you can enable it it's enabled already locally so we can actually just locally connect to the server by SSH which seems kind of pointless um, but there's also another thing we can do is enable uh, natin or masquerading within um, VirtualBox and uh, allow us to remotely connect to the host okay so if I just pop out of this and go to the VirtualBox configuration and go to file and preferences then go to network you should have NAT networks listed there so these are the ones that do enable a network address translation so go to NAT networks if there's not one already created click plus to add one click on the I'm going to just click on edit my existing one so you want to enable a network give it a name of any sort uh, a network of any sort so a slash 24 of some sort maybe I've just got 10.0.2.0 network, so it's a 0.2.255 in this case. It's got DHCP enabled, and, and then I'm going to enable port forwarding. So that will just create a network and not give the host an IP address on that network. Um, so we then just click OK on that. So once we've created that, we need to make sure it's assigned to the host as well. So if you go network, settings of the host, adapter, NAT network, and then name, let's obviously select the NAT network you created. And then if we go back into file preferences, then network, and then click edit, and then port forwarding, we click the little plus there. Give it a name. The protocol will be TCP for uh, SSH. Um, the host IP is your local IP, so um, you can just do 127001. That's the local IP. Host port then needs to be a port that's not currently used on your machine itself, not the VM, the machine itself. So I'll just select um, a random high number, so 2222 is generally not used. The guest IP will be the actual host the, sorry the actual VM's IP so we can quickly go get that so we go into the host again and go into terminal as always and just type IP space ADDR or IP address and we can see 10025 so 10025 and it's popping there so go back into here and 10, 0, 2, 5, and the guest port. This will be the port that the host is actually listening, the um, VM is actually listening on for SSH. So by default, this is port 22. You can look up uh, other services on the internet. Um, it's just a matter of searching what the port is for a particular host, uh, for a particular type of service. So guest port 22. Click OK. OK. And okay again that will do its magic then the first thing to do is just double check you can connect um, so it's just one two seven zero zero one and twenty two twenty two if you haven't already got this this is uh, kitty or you can use putty same thing so it's just a SSH client for um, Windows so you can just download it I'll put a link below for both of those so you can just download that if you haven't already um, you can actually just click you can actually just click here make sure it's on SSH here and you can click save if you give it a name so I'll just load this one uh, give it a name and click save and then that will be saved as your default so if you click open for the first time you'll get a security warning to say it doesn't recognize the um, host because obviously it's never seen it before so you can in this case you can say safely yes you log in as your normal user in most cases um, in for, for best security we shouldn't really be using it login as root and in fact you can disable that in the SSH config so login my, my local user 
and we're logged in and so we can all do, do all the same stuff we normally do here let's make it a little bit bigger so yeah I can get to root uh, that way so that's obviously like, a little bit more secure than um, it just being root because obviously everyone knows the uh, the account root and it will actually scan for that sort of thing so if you've got any uh, weak particularly weak passwords you'll get brute force pretty quickly especially if you're internet facing so that's something to be watching out for so what is a, a SSH key authentication so uh, SSH obviously is the uh, way for us to log into the console um, remotely so we can use obviously our username and password in most cases but uh, key um, protection allows us to authenticate using certificates and using a certificate we can do two-factor authentication so we can have the certificate and then a passphrase for the certificate so that secures it quite nicely and it's probably a lot more secure than just a username and password and also in most cases it's quite a lot quicker as well to log in so to enable that we only have to do a few things so first thing is to launch a terminal um, as the user you want to log in as and just do an SSH keygen Let's select the defaults and enter passphrase and all this will do is just create oops if you just go in cd.ssh and just do an ls let me just do a clear actually do an ls on here we've just got two files we've got an id.rsa which is the part private key for this server and then idrsa.pub which is the public key for this server so the public key would go into um, a file called authorized keys so for example if we wanted to be able to log into another server on the same network on, a, on an, another network or whatever we can put this uh, the id uh, underscore rsa dot pub uh, contents into uh, the other system and then it's in, in an authorized key file and this authorized key would allow authorized the login so we, let's do a um, let's do an example of this so we do a touch I'm just creating an authorized key file first keys file so it's authorized with a Z and then underscore keys okay so what we need to do on that file is actually just do a chmod first hundred and authorized keys so you must do this um, otherwise you won't be able to um, this will, will not function at all because the permissions have to be set so that no other users have as, as a has read access or especially read or read write as well because um, otherwise they can just authorize their own keys uh, so you only want the, the user itself to have access to read and write to this directory the, the file there's no need for it to have execute on this so TRA and we can see the file there okay so it's currently blank so what we need to do is for our Windows host that we logged in earlier with the um, username and password we need to create a uh, a key for ourselves so let's do that so I've got the files here I'm going to generate so there's a file called puttygen this will generate a key so generate public key pair to click generate and you move your mouse a bit to uh, generate some general randomness um, give the key a comment so um, host machine you probably want a passphrase to secure the um, private key okay and we want to save both files so we save the public key so we call it um, host dot pub and we'll save the private key host dot and then just leave it it will just put ppk on the end that's done that's saved and it's an RSA by default 2048 which is fine we don't need to use any of the other ones because it either may be not supported or they are pretty redundant old um, uh, versions so let's have a look what the public key looks like in the private key so if you open this 
and we can select all files and just select the public key for now. This is what the public key looks like. But that one will not work um, for this uh, the version of uh, OpenSSH. What we do, we'll conversion in a second. And let's just open the private key as well. So we can have a look what it looks like. Whoops, don't open the same file again. It's not a good idea. Um, so the PPK file. So we've got encryption type. And we can see there's the key there. Awesome. So now we need to go into your conversions export open SSH key and again we'll just call it host SSH dot pub again totally up to you what you want to call it we can also as you can see here copy this directly so what we're going to do is as you can see paste it into the authorized keys file so vi authorized keys I for insert, paste, yeah, I'm going to call it host machine, so we know where it's coming from. Uh, so that's just that's just a note for yourself where it's coming from, so it's just telling that's an SSH, it's using RSA, and then that's the key itself. Let's so do a right quit, check the permissions of the file, they all look good still, so we should be good to go. So next thing to do is use the pageant file so double click pageant and it will come on the bottom here right click that click view keys click add key find the host.ppk or the ppk file you created earlier you'll then be asked for the passphrase you created that will be now saved so we can now close that that will be still running in the background and now if we launch putty or um, kitty we can now launch that open it login as username and password however there's no password so authentication with public key you can see from agent and it's gone straight in and it's a full console so you can do all the same activities you may do um, usual so it's essentially the same if you wanted to um, if you wanted to do from Linux to Linux for example you would essentially add you'd create the do the SSH key gen that we just did we would go into the idrsa.pub we'll perhaps do a cat on that we'd copy the contents of this so it looks very similar to the putty one that's generated. Copy the contents of that, and then go to the server we want to log, be able to log into, and copy that into the authorized keys file for the user we want to log in as. Okay, so it's the home directory .ssh slash authorized keys. You do that, and then you'll log straight in. That's all there is to it. It's pretty pretty straightforward. Um, yeah, there's so the only real command was there was the SSH keygen and just those three packages you're going to need the very minimum. That's pageant, putty, and putty gen. Uh, I recommend kitty because it remembers things like usernames and stuff like that. So, for example, if I do a, uh, a duplicate session now, I don't even have to type the username because it remembers that for me, which is quite nice. As always, I put my uh, Kofi page on here. Um, so, yeah, if you've if you've got any inclination, please uh, drop a donation. That'd be awesome. Uh, then I've got my T Public um, for any T-shirts or anything like that. If you're interested in anything like that, uh, my Discord page for any questions. Um, starting to get a bit more active, which is fantastic. Um, as always, like and subscribe if you haven't already. Um, that'd be much appreciated. Um, I'm trying to reach the uh, 1K goal. We're we're nearly there, so um, please help out where you can. Um, thanks again for watching and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks again.